Welcome back to 806 Dub. New to the channel? Thanks for checking us out. Be sure to hit that uh, subscribe button. And uh, hit on that there little bell. That way you uh, be notified when we put out something new. For all y'all that been with us for a while, welcome back. That's Monday. August 24th. August 24th, y'all. We're almost almost got another month in the books here. That's what I was going to kind of talk about today. Is the summer doldrums. The slow August. You no, know, I've been doing this, uh, doing this ag work, I guess, uh, 2015 and it sure seems like and the type of ag work I, that I've always done pulling fertilizer liquid dry uh, you know it's normally what we're doing this time of year August is when it, it cuts off the first of August usually and uh Man, it's just hard to find anything to do in August, it seems like. Uh, luckily, uh, here where I'm at, the company I'm with, uh, we got these uh, we got these belly dumps, and uh, we've, uh, we've always been able to find something to haul, kind of stay steady through the month of August here. But, uh, and really, we kind of, you kind of, and really the first half of September is pretty slow too, until, uh, kind of depending on what, Back when I uh, was pulling a hopper bottom or hauling fertilizer and pulling a hopper bottom, uh, we would go and start hauling corn over here in the Texas Panhandle when they'd start harvest in the middle of September and do that for about a month until the cotton seed kicked off in uh, October, late October. So it's just kind of kind of how it goes. Like I said, it's just a summer doldrums. And just a, you know, just a slow time for us. Uh, with this company that I'm with here, uh, we start on peanuts in about the middle of September. We don't go do the corn, corn harvest or anything else. The peanuts pay a little more than the corn does. That corn, you got a lot of sitting, sitting and waiting in the field to get loaded, sitting and waiting to get unloaded at the elevator. So. Uh, we don't do much of that. There's one farmer here in Clarendon, right here where I'm loading right now. There's one farmer here. Uh, we'll go help him all. He has a few circles of corn that he's got. We've done it the last two years. I don't know if we're gonna do it this year or not, but uh, that's that's about the extent. That's about all we do, corn-wise. Been doing a lot of thinking, a lot of soul searching here, here lately. Got to figure out, got to start looking at what I'm going to do here in about another nine months, ten months down the road. And I've talked about this, hinted around about this a little bit in the past. district 
has, it ain't worth a damn price wise. But uh, they don't, really, I think the district should cover more of the cost of it than what they do because right now, about half of what my wife takes home every month, and they get paid once a month, uh, goes to her insurance costs. You know, for and, and she has a uh, she has her uh, and our three kids covered on insurance. And uh, if she was to add me to the plan, it would cost an additional eight hundred dollars a month to add me to her insurance plan. And all together, what she pays for our our uh, children and myself, if she was to add me. At the end of the month, she would end up having to pay the district $100 a month. In other words, she wouldn't get a check. She would have to pay the district $100 every month. Just to have the insurance, which is ridiculous. Which we know why these insurance costs have went up so much and everything else. The Affordable Care Act, a.k.a. Obamacare, uh, whatever, you know, drove these prices up the way they are now. But... Um, I have not had insurance, medical insurance, since I got laid off in uh, July of 2019. Got laid off from the oil field. So I just told her not to add me. Um, I've been trying to get a get some VA insurance, but uh, I keep getting turned down. And I don't know if I need to get a liaison or what to uh, help me try to get some VA medical insurance. I did eight years in the United States Army. Just six and a half on active duty and a year and a half in the National Guard. Uh, I enlisted November of 95, 1995 and I got out in November of 2003. Uh, but every time I apply for the VA medical coverage, I get turned down because I had never served in a combat arena. So, you know, I did do a year in South Korea and I was stationed at the United Nations Command Security Giant Joint Security Area, which is up on the DMZ. Which every time we haul fuel up to those uh, United Nations camps up there on the DMZ, we were locked and loaded and uh, ready to go. You know, so I don't know. It's just ridiculous that uh, can't, I can't get no coverage. And, uh, you know, and I, I ain't going to jump on my soapbox. I, and I don't know if it's true or not. You hear these stories all the time of these people that, uh, of folks that are here illegally. And uh, they get free medical coverage. And if that's true, which I don't know if it's true or not, but if that is true, that ain't worth a damn. You know, you serve your country for eight years, you know, devote eight years of your life, you know, I never went to a combat, combat arena, but I still can't get the coverage. Uh, so I don't know, I gotta do some more checking on that, but, but really, uh, I think, uh, I think I'm just gonna have to find something that has some benefits. I'm ready for a change. I'm ready. Uh, I won't go try to over the road stuff, or not necessarily over the road, but a regional deal. But I had, I've done it a little bit, and I've really enjoyed. Uh, like we're hauling this fertilizer, these long haul fertilizer loads. Uh, I really enjoyed doing that. You know what we got on the shoulder up here, y'all? Uh, today started break safety week. And uh, there was a DOT out here earlier. I don't know if he's still out here running around. There was. We've got minor P's and Q's on that. But, uh, but yeah, I'm really thinking I want to get into flat bedding. I think I can have a lot of good content in flat bedding uh, for the channel. I think uh, I like it because not just swinging doors. 
know, you know, pull a reefer or drive the end or whatever, you just swing it more. You don't get a whole lot of extra exercise on top of whatever exercise you might do on your own. But, you know, throwing chains, throwing straps, tarping, that, that, uh, that'll keep you in shape right there. So, uh, I follow a lot of, uh, a lot of folks that are uh, flat betters and uh, they just, they all seem like they have a pretty good time. You know, it don't matter what you do, you're gonna have a bad day. So, uh, there's a company down in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And uh, I know a guy, or actually my brother used to have his truck leased on to them. And uh, through my brother, I kind of know this guy that uh, I might be able to get hooked up with. Uh, they have a, they have drive-in freight and they have a flatbed freight. So one thing kind of good about a place like that is if it does get slow, you know, flatbed kind of uh, relies on the economy. If the economy's doing good, construction is going on, people are building houses, they're doing this, doing that. So a lot of lumber, a lot of steel, a lot of brick, a lot of building materials things that are moved on open deck are uh, being moved when the economy's doing good. If the economy's not doing so good, which is probably going to happen here before long, uh, flatbed freight slows way down uh, compared to drive and briefer. Uh, there's, uh, there's always going to be stuff to haul on drive in. So, you know, you can kind of swap back and forth. Place also allows uh, uh, allows you to bring your own truck and lease on as well. So, you know that's one thing. Uh, one thing I've looked at too is I, I yeah, I'd like to have some benefits and everything, but on the same hand, I'd like to have my own truck. Again, I've been the owner operator once. In fact, I'll throw up some pictures right here of uh, a back of my old. 96 Peterbilt back when I was an owner operator so uh, I'd like to do that again too and you know if you're, if, you're, if you're in with a good company and making good money then you know for my wife to add me $800 a month to her insurance to add me on her insurance then it might not be that big of a deal but right now I ain't making I'm not making that kind of money to, uh, to be able to do that so without taking a big hit at the house and not, you know, I like to go out and eat. I like to, uh, you know, go do things here and there. And uh, I still have three kids that, uh, two of them are out of the house, but you know how it is. They're, they're just out of the house and I got a grandbaby and uh, these kids need some help every now and then. So, um, you know, it's just the way it is. So, I don't know. I don't know. Unless, uh, unless somebody out there has got a big old shiny flat top. They need a good hand. They got some insurance. Hit me up. <laughs> y'all watch this channel. Y'all know what I can do. So. Uh, but I need to stay here until uh, Bubba, 806 Junior, graduates. You know, so this is his senior year. Gonna have a lot going on this uh, senior year, so uh, playing sports and just all the things that happen with the kid on their senior senior year of high school. So, like I said, I love the company I'm at. I love 
got four beds, who are they going to put in there? The four with the insurance. So, that's just, uh, who's going to most likely get the better care? You know, the ones with the insurance. That guaranteed money. So, uh, so about this time next year, you know, uh, I'll probably hang around here through our through our harvest season and our uh, fertilizer season. And about this time next year, be when it's starting to get slow again. This is probably when I'm going to start looking, start looking at one thing. You know, and another thing, a lot of these are over the road companies. They want you to have, uh, they want you to have one, uh, you know, one to two years experience over the road. Early, a 
a day early, well, a lot of times it won't take you in. It's just, but one thing good about reefer, like I said earlier, people are always going to eat. So the temperature, temperature controlled division, trucking, reefer, there's always going to be stuff to do. And the rates are generally pretty good in reefer as, as well. So, and where I live here, Besides the ag, ag side of things, reefer is probably the most prevalent uh, opportunity around here in Amarillo, Texas, which is pretty much where I say I'm from, even though I'm from Memphis, Texas, but Amarillo is the closest city to where I live. Uh, pretty much every trucking company besides your uh, besides your ag and your industrial stuff like rock hauling, concrete hauling, stuff like that, is reefer. You got jacks transport reefer. You got even some trucking reefer. You got uh, random trucking, which is reefer. You got uh, affiliated, which uh, is reefer. You got, who else is up there? there? There are several companies up there, and they're all reefer companies for the most part. So, uh, and the reason why reefer is real prevalent here is all the feedlots. We have a lot of packing plants and feedlots and that type of stuff. So that's why the reefer is really, really, really prevalent here. But uh, yeah, my buddy old Gary, five eight old the most man. He's got like two or three videos on YouTube. I always put his link down in there. Y'all might check him out sometime. But uh, no, he's one of my best friends. You know. He, one kind of told me, you know, he talked me down. I thought about, you know, jumping and going and doing something different right now, but, you know, he told me, hey, you know, your harvest season's coming up, your harvest will be hammered down, busier than hell. You know, just stick with what you're doing. Stick with what you're doing. So, so that's what we're going to do. What I'm going to do, I'm going to stick it out here and let's, let's take the side and run me off, you know, or whatever. You know, then we'll have to do something different. But, uh, I would ramble on a little bit, kind of, kind of let y'all know what I was thinking, what I'm doing. Uh, what a lot of uh, belly dumps running today. Look, they're four in a row, five in a row right there. I don't know where. I think they're hauling. I think they're coming up here to Memphis and going back uh, about 20 miles to the west. And uh, they're about to work on have a big highway job going on over there. I think they're hauling. Look, here come two more right there, or three more right there. So. They're hauling some stuff up there on Highway 83. I think we're going to start a road job. But anyway, I'll quit, uh, I'll quit yapping here and uh, 